I have done a few videos about what happened to a various school's top quarterbacks in their program history, and in today's video, we're going to continue that series by looking at what happened to the best quarterbacks in Missouri football history and where they are now. Missouri has had some pretty interesting guys over the years, such as Blaine Gabbert, Chase Daniel, Drew Locke, and Matty Mock, but there are two other players that always go under the radar. Some guys had massive hype going into the NFL, some actually had pretty long NFL careers, and some would get into legal trouble, so let's just jump right into it. But right before we do that, please be sure to give the video a like if you want to support today's video and the channel, subscribe to both this channel and my basketball channel, suggest another team, topic, or player I should do next, and turn on post notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now let's go ahead and get started and talk about what happened to the best quarterbacks in Missouri Tigers football history. For today's video, the order will be based on career touchdowns, so feel free to let me know your own top six. This video was supposed to be about the top five, but the sixth player was too tempting not to talk about, so we're going to go ahead and throw him in. At number six, we have Blaine Gabbard. Pretty much everyone knows who he is, as he is the highest drafted quarterback of the century for Mizzou football. The Gabbard family grew up in the St. Louis area, and everyone knew he was going to eventually play college ball. He blossomed into one of the top quarterbacks in his class, and was so good that he was rated as a five-star recruit at one point. He originally committed to Nebraska, but after Bill Callahan was fired, he chose to keep his talents in-state and signed with Gary Pinkle and the Missouri Tigers. When he came into the program, he was the backup to Chase Daniel and Chase Patton, and he got to learn the system. The following year, he became the full-fledged starter and passed over 3,500 yards and 24 touchdowns while showing glimpses of superstar potential. In 2010, he led Mizzou to a win over number one Oklahoma at home, but he didn't have as good of a year as many would have thought, as his stats would drop. That didn't matter though, because at 6'4", with the arms and legs he had, the leadership abilities, and the high praise from scouts, he was expected to be the top pick, and was even debated to be the number one overall pick versus Cam Newton. He ended up being the third quarterback taken behind Newton and, behind Newton and Jake Locker, and he was taken with the 10th overall pick by the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he dealt with injury, different coaches, and poor play, so he was eventually shipped over to the 49ers where he'd get a few chances to start. He then played for the Cardinals before he became Tom Brady's backup in Tampa Bay this past season, and he got a Super Bowl ring. By many, he's considered the most overrated quarterback in Missouri history because he really didn't do a whole lot compared to the hype he had coming out of high school, but he was a really fun player to watch and one of the first players I really liked as a kid. His brothers Tyler and Brett both became D1 quarterbacks, and Tyler didn't do a whole lot, but Brett is the current starter for Miami of Ohio. I'm honestly shocked that Mizzou did not recruit him. At number 5, we have maybe the most interesting guy on the list in Matty Mock. He is the all-time leader in high school football passing yards and was a big name on the recruiting trail. Since he was undersized and one-dimensional though, he was not a 5-star recruit like many would have thought, and he was only a low 4-star guy. He committed to Missouri over Notre Dame and Illinois, and became the backup to James Franklin. In 2013, he played in relief of Franklin, leading the team to a win over number 7 Georgia. A ranked Florida team tossed 4 touchdowns against Kentucky, but he'd lose a close overtime game to South Carolina, which was absolutely heartbreaking, but Franklin would come back, and Missouri would go to the SEC Championship game. In 2014, he became the main starter, and he helped lead them to a 10-2 record and a berth in the SEC Championship game once again, where they lost to Alabama. He came back in 2015, but got into a few off-the-field issues as a video surfaced of him snorting a white substance. He apparently got into a bar fight, and his brakes were even sabotaged on his car. Plus, he wasn't playing as well on the field, and they had just recruited a hot shot by the name of Drew Locke, and everyone wanted to see him play the moment that Mock started to struggle. He was dismissed from the team and went to Eastern Kentucky, where he barely ever played and got hurt. He tried to make it to the NFL, but he didn't get very far, and he is now a high school football coach. At number 4, we have James Franklin, who in my opinion is the most underrated quarterback in Mizzou football history. He was born in Oklahoma, but would make a name for himself in the Texas high school football system, more specifically at Lake Dallas High School. He became one of the better quarterback recruits in his class, and ultimately chose to take his talents to Missouri. He was a four-star guy, so he had high expectations coming into Columbia, and he would live up to them. He rushed for two touchdowns as a freshman backup to Blaine Gabbert and became the starter in 2011. He passed for 21 touchdowns and ran for 15 touchdowns and looked like one of the better quarterbacks in all of college football. Going into 2012, he was battling a shoulder injury as Missouri just joined the SEC, and it was a mess of a year for both Franklin and the Tigers. He was back as a senior though, and Mizzou would have a great year, but Franklin would get injured against Georgia and missed a few games. Luckily though, we just talked about it, Matty Mock came in and saved the day, and he returned for the Ole Miss game and then led them to the SEC Championship game, where he could have played for a national title had they just beaten Auburn, but Trey Mason had the last laugh. After he graduated and went undrafted in the NFL, he got a shot with the Detroit Lions, but eventually moved north. He played for three different teams in the CFL, and as of now, is still playing. He was a Mizzou legend and very underappreciated in the eyes of many, and he was seen as a very humble and good guy off the field. 
At number three, we have Brad Smith, who in the eyes of many was the quarterback that changed the direction and narrative about Mizzou football and the Gary Pinkle tenure. After coming to Mizzou from the Ohio high school football system, he redshirted and immediately became a star. He established himself as one of the better quarterbacks in all of college football. He became only the second player in Division I history to ever pass for 2,000 yards and rush for 1,000 yards in a year. The team did not see as much success as he probably would have thought though, but he did become the first player in Division I history to pass for 8,000 yards and run for over 4,000 yards in a career, and I'd say that's pretty good. He was a first team All-Big 12 guy at one point, a first team All-American, and won the Dratty Trophy. He left Mizzou with basically every school record, and many still stand today. He was drafted in the fourth round and had a solid career as a wide receiver, where he played for the Jets, Bills, and Eagles before he would retire, and he kind of did a little bit of everything. I feel like he's definitely one of the more underrated stars of the 2000s decade, and I definitely need to do a video on him someday. At number two, we have one of the better statistical quarterbacks in SEC football history, and in current Denver Broncos starting quarterback Drew Locke. His father Andy played at Mizzou back in the day, so Drew was always a fan of the Tigers, and he grew up in Lee Summit, Missouri. He blossomed into one of the best quarterback recruits in high school football, and he was praised for his arm and was a high four-star recruit. He chose to stay in state and play for Mizzou over Tennessee and Michigan, and Jim Harbaugh apparently said he could never make it to the NFL if he went to Missouri. After Matty Mock struggled and got into legal trouble, Locke became the starter in 2015 and had a very humbling freshman season. He came back on a mission as a sophomore though and would lead the SEC in passing yards, but the Tigers went 4-8 in year one under Barry Odom. He came back as a junior and despite a 1-5 start, led the Tigers to six straight wins, broke the SEC record for touchdown passes in a season, and then led them to the Texas Bowl where they lost, and he was mocked by Tom Herman. He could have left for the NFL, but chose to come back for his senior year where some say he disappointed under new offensive coordinator Derek Dooley. And fun fact, just a season prior, he had Josh Heupel as his offensive coordinator who's now the head coach at Tennessee. He was still seen as a first round pick, but he slipped to the second round where he was taken by the Denver Broncos and the potential franchise quarterback of the future. He showed a lot of flash towards the end of his rookie year in the NFL, but both him and the Broncos really struggled in 2020, and many are starting to doubt whether he's actually the answer. He'll likely have one more year to prove himself before he gets replaced, and some Mizzou fans like to point out that he really didn't win any big games during his time as a Tiger, and I do agree with that, but a lot of that blame needs to go on Barry Odom. Finally, at number one, we have to talk about the best quarterback in school history, Chase Daniel. He grew up in Texas and became a big-time high school football recruit at South Lake High School. In case that name doesn't ring a bell, that's the same high school that Sam Ellinger, Drew Brees, Nick Foles, and current Clemson commit Cade Klubnick went to, so he was a great player at a great school with great tradition. He wanted to play for Texas really bad, but Mac Brown didn't recruit him until he had already committed to Mizzou, and Gary Pinkle promised him to be a part of the resurgence for the Tigers program. He came into his collegiate career as the backup to Brad Smith and would play a bit as a freshman. He took over the starting job as a sophomore, led the Tigers to the Sun Bowl, and became a first team All Big 12 selection. He was promised to help lead the resurgence, and 2007 was the definition of it. In what was the weirdest season in college football history, Mizzou went 11 and 1, and they actually became the number one team in the country after they beat number two Kansas in the Border War. And Daniel would become a star, but unfortunately, it didn't shine enough as they lost to Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship game. And if they just won that, they would have been in the national title. This is the second time in the last few years that they were close to the title game. And it just shows that a lot of programs like Missouri just can't get it done when it matters most. In 2008, some thought he could win the Heisman, and Mizzou was supposed to be back, and he was all over the cover of Sports Illustrated, but the Tigers would disappoint to a degree, and sadly things just didn't go as planned. He passed for the most yards in school history though, and went down in all the record books. He was seen as one of the better quarterbacks in the draft, but he was short, and many thought that he wouldn't translate to the NFL, so he went undrafted. He didn't let that bother him though as he signed with the Saints, and he spent a lot of time as the backup with his former teammate Drew Brees on the Saints, and he has been seen as one of the better backups in the NFL for a long time, and the dude has seemingly been everywhere around the league. Well, that is today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed a look at Missouri's quarterbacks from the past few years, as all these guys were back to back to back, and as you know, I'm a Mizzou fan, so this was a very fun video to make. In your opinion though, who do you think is the best quarterback in school history, and what team or position group should I do in my next video? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section, Give the video a like if you want to support what I'm doing here on YouTube. Subscribe to both this channel and my basketball channel. And check out my playlist about all my Mizzou videos and my video about what happened to Maddie Mock. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.